I've got another approved 501st costume and my first really large troop. I got lots to talk about today on Darth Rage Reviews. <laughs> with you, young Skywalker. But you are not a Jedi yet. Greetings, Force fans, and welcome to another episode of Darth Rage Reviews, your source for the Force. Guys, I, I went and did it. I went and did a thing, and I'm just going to talk about it briefly. But yes, I now have two, count them, two approved 501st Legion costumes. Uh, I had the 501st there, the original 501st uh, Realistic Phase 2 Clone Trooper. And so I just changed up the helmet and got myself an approved 332nd Realistic Phase 2 Clone Trooper. So yes, yes, yes. My goal this year was to get one approved in the 501st, and I got two. You set the goals, you exceed the goals. It's a visualization thing. I recommend everybody try it, but yeah, not going to go into details on this. I'm very, very happy with it. Very, very proud of it, but yes, two 501st approved costumes. So let's get to the meat of what we're here to talk about today, guys. We're talking about my first really large trooping event, but before that, I want to talk about some swag that I got at that event. Um, I told you guys before in the other video about the coins and patches that are kind of traded back and forth amongst members. So I picked myself up a couple new 50 or 25th anniversary uh, a coin in a patch. So this coin that is, I mean, that thing is just beautiful. Very, very cool. 25 years. So I got that coin and then I got that patch. And these are both from a garrison member from uh, who's here down in Miami, um, or came down, came up from Miami, um, and brought a whole bunch of really cool patches and stuff with them. So I got those two to go with the ones that I've already got, a collection that is ever expanding. Um, and then these are really cool. Uh, a lot of the members have these, and I'm going to go ahead and and get a set made up for myself as well. But these are 501st Legion trading cards. So you'll get pick of your character on the front and then on the back you've got you with all your information your tk number and all that but yeah they're like little kind of you know baseball trading cards for your character so yeah i'm definitely going to get some of these made up make it something that i can ship out to people and hand out to people um also picked up a couple of stickers that some of them had i'm a sucker for star wars swag and they had a whole lot of Star Wars swag there. So yeah, very psyched about all that as well. And I'm psyched to get kind of, you know, some people even have their own patches and their own coins. I may go that far as well. I'm just not sure. But yeah, definitely getting some trading cards for that. So my first big event. How did it go? What was it? What, what are we talking about? So this was a Star Wars night at uh, the Pensacola hockey team, the Pensacola Ice Flyers. Um, so they had a Star Wars themed night that they invited the 501st Legion uh, there to attend. Um, this was an official Lucasfilm sponsored event. So what that means is that the Ice Flyers uh, had permission from Disney and Lucasfilm to incorporate elements of Star Wars into, uh, they had a special Mandalorian jersey that they all wore and they sold. They are able to advertise this as a Star Wars night and use all of the copyright and trademarked uh, Lucasfilm and Disney images and stuff with that. What that meant for us is that everything had to be by the book. We had to have uh, all of our uh, costumes had to be screen accurate. Um, all of our costumes are screen accurate, but sometimes in events, like let's say we're doing a Christmas parade, we may have tinsel on our armor or wear Santa hats or things like that. Can't do anything like that for an official Lucasfilm event. Um, also, we need to do our best not to take pictures in front of advertisements to make it look like we're advertising for something. Uh, try to avoid pictures with people with beer, um, just, you know, things like that, just because we're representing Disney and Lucasfilm at an official event like this. So those were the little extra added rules and regulations. So the way this thing worked is we showed up at five. The game was going to start at seven. Um, that gave us an hour to get ready, and then they wanted us kind of on hand to greet the, the uh, guests as they came in um, at six o'clock. 
stay there for an hour and then we kind of get an hour break and then go back up about halfway through the game and just walk along the, the concourse and be available for pictures and things like that. So showed up at five. Uh, as, as I talk about this, guys, I'm going to show you pictures, just kind of pop some pictures up and, and let you see uh, what I captured and what uh, some of the two professional photographers, Rebecca and Eddie, that are both members, uh, they also captured some pics for us as well. So I'll be showing those as I'm talking about it. But I showed up at five and we had two separate dressing rooms, one for the boys, one for the girls. Uh, we were kind of all, you'll see everybody's kind of in various states of getting ready. Some characters, it takes a whole lot longer to get that stuff on than others. Um, some of us need two or three people, people to help us get into our armors. Uh, but, you know, we basically, this is when we're all getting that kind of last bite, going to the bathroom one last time before we put the armor on, getting those last drinks, just catching up, seeing how everybody's doing. Um, but yeah, we got about an hour to get ready. And then they took us up the elevator to the concourse and we separated into two groups and kind of spread out to the two different areas uh, on the concourse and set up in, in like groups of three or four characters just so people could come up and take photographs with us. Um, each one of us had some handlers with us. Um, so there was a group, I had basically one handler for about 20 people that were with us um, and we would have one non armored character in the groups of three or four. So, you know, we had, uh, uh, an Imperial officer, uh, that was with us, um, that was basically able to assist myself and, uh, Captain Rex, um, when people were wanting to come up and take photos, because when you're at an event like this, okay, learning, I'm going to pause here and just tell you guys real quickly, a learning that I learned. I need to get helmet fans for my helmets. So helmet fans, and not not to cool me off, I was not hot at all. Granted, it was an ice hockey game, so it was a cooler arena. Not hot at all, not sweaty at all. It's just my visor fogged up about 10 minutes after putting the helmet on, and it was really difficult to see anything. So need to get helmet fans. They make them, you can you know get like dual helmet fans for like 25, 50 bucks, something like that, run off of USB power. Definitely going to get helmet fans to put in here. Just so I can see a little bit better, uh, at these events, um, could not really hear really well either. It's kind of hard to hear in that, uh, first off, but when you add that ambient kind of crowd noise at a sporting event, it's almost impossible to hear. So being out there, it was great to have a handler that wasn't helmeted that could really kind of help guide the people in to get pictures with us and, and stuff like that. I apologize to anybody that was there that were asking me specific questions, I couldn't understand you, you know, so I did a lot of nodding and a lot of, you know, hold my gun up and, and fist things and fist bumps. But if you asked me something specific and it seemed like I ignored you, I wasn't ignoring you. I felt like I was deaf, dumb, blind, and in a foreign country, uh, wearing that armor in that kind of situation. Um, so how were the people? The people were awesome. The people were great. Um, we got a lot of really good pictures, a lot of uh, just normal people in costume, people bringing lightsabers. It was a really, really fun Star Wars themed event. And the, the people themselves couldn't have been cooler. Uh, they were all really, really happy to see us. Uh, they were all really impressed with the costumes. I mean, how, how can you not be? Look at these, look at these costumes. Um, so yeah, it was all around just, you know, a great feeling. So we spent about an hour up there first, went back, kind of chilled out for about 30 minutes. People took a break, took some of their, you know, pieces off or adjusted their armor then went back out for another hour and then got onto the ice at the end for pictures with, you know, all the, all the fans that wanted pictures with us on the ice. Um, so yeah, it was, and it was just a really, really fun event. Um, the, the, there was one gentleman that came in a full homemade, Bud Light clone trooper outfit. And I really wish we could have taken a photo with you, man. That outfit looked awesome, but just due to the nature of the event and the fact that it, you couldn't take a picture of that without Bud Light everywhere. We couldn't take a pic with you, but dude, that was, that was a really good costume and I appreciate it. I hope, I hope you're watching. If you are, I'm sorry. Next event, I promise I'll take a picture with you if, if we show up and it's not an officially sponsored event, but yeah. Uh, had a lot of fun. It was, I mean, I wore my armor from probably about 5.30 till about 9.30 at night. So that was, you know, four hours straight. Nothing broke, nothing snapped. You know, it was not terribly uncomfortable. I wasn't sweaty. Other than the helmet fog, 
issue. Uh, everything went really, really well, so I couldn't be more pleased with my armor. Um, I managed to be able to wear both the helmets because both were approved, so I technically got credit for two troops there, so that was kind of cool too. Um, but yeah, can't be more pleased with how the armor turned out and how you know everything went at this event. So again, this event was with the Florida Garrison that I wasn't a member of. However, I have recently transferred and become a member of the Florida Garrison, the Parjai Squad, which is the one that's out of uh, Pensacola. Because honestly, it's closer to me than the Mobile guys. Um, and to be honest, they have better events. You know, that's that they've got a lot more and and a lot bigger and a lot more participation. So. Uh, I will be now, I was a member of the Delta Squad, now I'm a member of the Parjai Squad. And again, we are out of Pensacola, Florida. But first event, couldn't be happier with how it turned out. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed seeing the pictures and kind of experiencing this with me. Let me know if you want to see other events. I'm happy to bring the camera along and take photos, take pics, and, and share this experience with you. If you liked it, guys, please, as always, leave me a like, leave me a comment. Hope you did. As always, I'm Darth Rage. This is Darth Rage Reviews, your source for the Force. The circle is now complete. When I left you, I was but the learner. Now I am the master.